Hello crafters, this is Mary Prasad at washwithcolor.com. Today I'm going to review Viviva Color Sheets and Peerless Watercolors. Viviva Color Sheets and Peerless Watercolors are basically paper-like substrate sheets saturated with highly pigmented dyes. Only a small amount of water is necessary to activate them. To use them, you just touch a wet brush to the surface and you're ready to paint. Viviva Color Sheets come in a convenient booklet that's ready to go. Peerless watercolors also come in a booklet, but you really cannot use them as is. They make a travel set, sort of, but it contains about 14 separate pages and only 6 acetate dividers. I much prefer making my own palette, which is what I am using here. Let's take a closer look at these paints. The Viviva Color Sheets has an area inside the front cover where you may put your name in case you lose them. The next page has instructions. Then there are four sections, each with four colors, for a total of 16. I swatched the colors along each side of the paints to have a realistic color guide. The booklet is stitched together in the middle. Note there may be some irregularities such as this color's name which I had to flip to another section to read. There are waterproof partition pages between the colors to prevent them from touching each other, although I don't recommend putting this booklet away wet. The booklet also contains an index so you can find the page quickly of where the colors are. I still recommend swatching each as the colors that are printed do not exactly match the colors of the paint. Here's a quick flip through of the colors. The center page actually has two separator sheets. This is just the way it was put together. The Peerless Watercolors Complete Edition comes as a booklet, but there are also separate packs that you can buy, and these just come loose. The Complete Edition includes a cover, an introductory page, then six pages of instructions and information taken from the original 1902 version, and then finally, 15 pages of colors. You may notice that mine are a little shorter because I made a palette with these. There are a couple issues that I have with this booklet. One, as you can see, is some of them do fall out. Others have some glue that leaked around to the front and maybe stuck to the facing page. These are minor problems though, since you're gonna have to transfer these into something else to use them. There are no separator pages. They will stick to the preceding pages if you do get them wet. I'm flipping to the page which I think was the worst with the glue. Now the company has said that the glue will not harm the paints themselves. You can just add a little bit of water and get the paper that stuck to it off. As far as storing these paints, you should keep them away from moisture. I recommend putting them in a Ziploc bag and maybe adding a packet of silica gel desiccant to help wick away the moisture. Another issue I had with the Peerless is that they come in separate sheets that are hand cut, so there are inconsistencies. Now the company was kind enough to send me replacements for any that were really short, so they do stand behind their products. Here's a look at the size difference between the Viviva color sheets and Peerless watercolors. I will add that I've noticed that there is more pigment on the Viviva color sheets, so although they are smaller, I believe they will last as long as the larger Peerless. The company claims that their set is equivalent to a half pan watercolor set. Since the Peerless watercolors are pretty much unusable as they come, I made myself my own palette. Many people have done this, and I've included a link to a pre-printed palette in my accompanying post. Please check the links down below for the link to my post. My palette contains an extra two-sided page, giving me 60 full colors. Now this is not all the colors that they make, they make 78 in all, but many colors are very similar, and actually I don't even need 60, so I'm probably going to make a smaller palette one of these days. 
Next up are my color swatch sheets. I make these for every watercolor or any color sets that I have so that I can see the true colors. I try to make them on the paper that I'm going to be using. Here's a look at the Peerless and also of oh, the Viva color sheets, which is actually on the same page as the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers because they are also very similar in brightness and pigmentation. This is my test sheet for comparing the Viviva against the Peerless. I did one of each of the Viviva and then tried to match the closest Peerless. I did a salt test, lift test, and a wet and wet test. I also looked for the color that is the most similar from the Peerless set down here and did the same test with the Peerless. The link below this video will take you to a post which will have much more information plus close-ups of each of these tests. I'm going to show you how I did this with just two colors. I used two cups of water, one that's going to always be clean and one that I rinse my brush in, some salt, which is a kosher salt, this Morton type. And the brush I'll be using is a low Cornell Simpatico number no. two round. This is the first time I've used this brush. Sorry, you can't really read it, but <laughs> um, this is the first time I'm using this brush and I was actually very impressed. I'll definitely be doing some painting with this in the future. In general, what I've learned is that Viviva color sheets and Peerless watercolors are very comparable. They are both bright and vibrant, highly pigmented dye inks. Neither one of them are light fast, but this isn't a problem if you're using these in a sketchbook. If you do plan to display them, then I would highly recommend scanning these and printing them or coating them with some UV filtering spray or possibly framing them with UV filtering glass or plexiglass. Both of these paints reacted similarly to the salt. Basically, they acted about the same as watercolor. You could see some nice texture in almost all the colors. There were a few that I had to retry. As far as lifting goes, they lifted fairly well across the board. They did stain the paper somewhat. This is not surprising since they're dye-based pigments. As far as the wet and wet goes, they both bloomed pretty much as to be expected. I'm gonna speed this up now and I'll meet you at the next test, which is layering. Normally layering or glazing is done from light to dark in thin layers to change or build up the color. For the purposes of the video, I decided to add a lot of the light color to the darker color in hopes that it would show up better on the video. Both of these paints reacted as soon as the wet color came in contact with them. I think they are a little more temperamental than traditional watercolor. I had better luck with very thin layers and of course making sure that they're dry in between the layers. The colors did change as expected under the overlap, but I happened to choose the only opaque color for the Viviva, which was especially noticeable when dry. When I brushed clean water across dried paint, in both cases, the paint was pushed away, forming a darker line when the paint dried. This is how I did the lift test for all the colors. I just swiped clean water across the swatch, let it sit for a few seconds, then soaked it up with a paper towel. Here's a close-up of the layering and the rewetting test. You can see already that the color is being pushed away and has it even fully dried. 
and there's a look at how opaque the color became on the Viviva side. As far as opacity goes, all the colors were pretty transparent, with the exception of the one that I've already mentioned. That was the Viviva Chrome Yellow. You'll see a close-up of this in a couple seconds. Here's the lift test of the black colors. It actually surprised me and lifted the best. Now watch as I re-wet the paints and see how easily they reactivate. This last test is a wet mix of a gradient going from one color to another. Both paints remain luminous and pigmented when mixed, although the reds have a lean towards the yellow hue, so when mixed with blue they become a deeper purple in the range of burgundy and wine depending on the amount of blue. To produce brighter purples, I had to mix the blue with Viviva Magenta and Peerless Lip Smacking Pink. This is how the areas that I had re-wet earlier finally dried. I was able to test the Viviva color sheets in the field on a recent trip to Washington, D.C. This is a picture of an owl that I did while I was sitting at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Here are pictures of my sketchbooks of both of the images that I did while in D.C. It was very easy to hold the Viviva color sheets and paint with a water brush. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. For more information, please visit my website, awashwithcolor.com. Here are a couple more videos in case you're interested, and I hope you have a wonderful day.